lovely imps. Today, we are doing yet another installment of Conspiracy Mama. Uh, the part of the show where we watch and debunk <laughs> conspiracy theories. Usually just kind of laugh at them because most of the ones that we come across these days are so off the rails that there's nothing really to debunk. You can only kind of point out the general... Uh, lack of adherence to evidence whatsoever uh, when we're reacting to these. It's mostly for our own enjoyment, and I hope that you will enjoy this particular segment. Today, we are going to be reacting to the infamous uh, uh, conspiracy channel called Mind Unveiled. Uh, Mind Unveiled is a channel that is very obsessed with, the, uh, with a conspiracy theory an alternate fictional universe that they believe is real called tartaria which posits that uh somewhere around the 1800s the late 1800s the entire world was wiped away in a giant mud flood and a ancient race of giants uh basically have constructed a new world order to control us something along those lines today we're going to be re watching Tartaria Explained Part 10, don't worry, the order doesn't matter at all, Waste Management slash Poop Fuel. So I hope that you're ready to learn about how the ancient pre-downfall uh, pre races of Earth used poop for fuel. Let's do it. Let's, let's fucking do it. Oh yeah, and by the way, Irish people are Jewish people, and there you have it. Let's go. Hey everyone, we have a really interesting video for you guys today, kind of out there, but we actually referenced this on Tartaria Part 2 and never really explained it. Before beginning, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Conspiracy RS. We've been mentioning his video on waste management for years and we just wanted to have a resource here on the channel where we can ask these questions and try to understand what's going on. The reason we're questioning waste management is because throughout the last 300 years, there have been severe issues with how we manage getting rid of mass amounts of human waste. They don't really focus in on this on history class and highlighting how it doesn't really make sense for a people to construct a massive city and then a hundred years later realize that their entire sewage system needed to be reconstructed so that they could properly manage getting rid of such a large population's excrement. Just to make clear how important this is, Without proper fecal sludge management, it can back up, get in the water, make people sick. And so you would think that people who built these large cities would have known that from the get-go. Well, they did, but the cities were growing at such a rapid pace that it didn't matter anyway. That's why fucking plagues of all types were rife in major cities. Industrialization was a nightmare process for the people who lived through it. The earliest eras of industrialization was miserable. People lived in horrible, horrible, disgusting conditions. And yes, they often had to trudge through their own shit. Yeah, dude, what do you, have you... Talk about not knowing your history, bro. Why was this something that had to be rediscovered or reinvented after people started getting sick and it becoming a problem? This will be explained more as we proceed, but for now, let's just start... They didn't even know what made people get sick yet. When they started rebuilding sewage systems, first of all, they started rebuilding sewage systems before they had like microscopes to understand microbes. Like people started to figure out that they needed better sewage systems before that. But also there were certain types of sewage systems that existed. Like, I mean, fucking uh, Romans had a water-based sewage system that would wash the sewage away using aqueducts. It's just that they weren't very good or efficient and modern plumbing obviously changed the game. Whatever. There are some well-known examples of horrible waste management. The Great Stink of London. In 1858, the River Thames got so backed up with human waste that disease started to spread prompting action from the government. There are several illustrations of this and supposedly thousands of people died from cholera. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if it was even more when you consider other outbreaks and faulty statistics. The final number they tell us is okay. 20,000 people died due to the Great Stink. Quote, the scientist Michael Faraday described the situation in a letter to the Times in July 1855. 
Shocked at the state of the Thames, he dropped pieces of white paper into the river to test the degree of opacity. His conclusion was, near the bridges, the feculents rolled up in clouds so dense they were visible at the surface, even in water of this kind. Okay. The smell was very bad and common to the whole of the water. It was the same as that which now comes up from the gully holes in the streets. The whole river was for the time a real sewer. The smell of the river was so bad that in 1857, the government poured chalk lime, chloride of lime, and carbolic acid into the river to ease the stench. It seems that the main problem was that during this time, they had begun installing public flush toilets and so, people were beginning to get these in their households for the first time. Okay. According to the official history, the first public toilets were not invented until the 1850s, where they were showcased in the Great Exhibition of 1851 in London. In many of these events of such horrible waste management, such as with the Great Stink, they want to blame it on hot weather, but no, it has nothing to do with mass amounts of people flooding their waste into pipes that are designed only for rainwater. What? what I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not understanding what his argument is here. I'm, I'm actually not understanding what he's talking about. Like, yeah, he's setting it up, I guess. It's just, it's very weird so far. So far he's like, he's like, yeah, there were too many people pooping in one place. Convenient that a toilet was invented in 1851, right? All right, let's go, let's continue, let's continue. So it seems that London, from all the history that we know, has never had a good relationship with waste management as- Literally true, obviously, yes, London is one of the most infamous, one, one of the most infamously filthy fucking cities in the entire planet when it comes to waste management. Yes, that's like universally recognized, my man. People suspect that it had a role in the plague that wiped out a quarter of the population in just 18 months in 1665. So it took until the 19th century for them to start looking into ways of proper waste management? It's interesting that some of these earliest sewers were made of brick, and I wonder if this is something that was lost or forgotten, but just consider this for later. The city of London had over 200,000 cesspits that leaked methane gas, which usually caught fire and or exploded. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. But okay. before we look into other examples, let's take a look at how this worked in America. So. Colonial America used wastewater management where they would literally get rid of the waste and water together, either through dumping it into the yard, street, gutter, or an open channel serving as a sewer. The story goes, this is just how they dealt with things until the 1850s. The majority of people just accepted the sanitation problems as a necessary part of urban life. But it wasn't until- Yeah, and they hated it. It's so funny. Sometimes these people are- they're they're like they can't they, they can't acknowledge the idea that like wait industrialization was a horrifying and nightmare inducing process for every single person who lived through it they fucking hated it it was miserable people uh, peasants being forcibly displaced off the land and forced to move into cities where they had to live in fucking excrement and it was horrible and made them live terrible terrible lives wow God forbid, no, that can't be the truth. They had to have secret alien technology that let them get rid of the poop and turn it into fuel. That's where this is going. While major epidemics began happening, they decided to start inventing sewage systems. So let me get this straight. This is what Chicago looked like in 1860, and we're supposed to believe that they had this entire city built out, and they waited a hundred years to even think of proper waste management? It's as if, Large amounts of humans having to empty their bowels never so much as cross their minds. There's a theme that they blame this all on the Asiatic cholera that had been spreading in other cities around the world at this time, without pointing out what the real cause of the issue was, human waste. Chicago had no sewers. What do you mean Asiatic outbreak? They were dumping their waste on the streets and the Chicago River and why wouldn't people start to get sick? So all their waste was going to Lake Michigan, which multiple cities were getting their water from, and so this brought deadly contaminants and disease essentially until every household. 
And this was not just in Chicago, this was everywhere in the States. We only know about Chicago and the New York events because those were obviously the biggest ones, but this happened all over the world during this time. Because of these outbreaks, the hero or the person responsible with creating the first comprehensive sewer system in the United States was Ellis Chesbro. This is the engineer that basically fixed all the waste management issues in the United States with this new system that divided flood water and waste into different systems and redirected it into the Mississippi River. That's the thing that you'll see with all these stories is that they never even really fix it. It's just that they redirect it to some other area that probably causes issues in other small towns. Also, Chicago was flooded during this point, which- I'm getting such mixed messages so far. So far, he's simultaneously agreeing with and disagreeing with the origin, the historical narrative at random. He's like, convenient. And then he just goes on to say, wow, they were living in their own shit, convenient. I'm like, huh? I'm so confused so far. This is all over the place right now. Was another reason they needed waste management. So it wasn't just swamp water, you know, with the whole story that they had to rise the entire city by 15 feet. It was fecal sludge. I just find it hard to believe, especially a city with the World Fair and all these extravagant buildings. How do you mess up that bad when creating a city? It seems that this is a time after the reset that these cities began to become backed up from their new inhabitants being unable to discover the proper method of waste management. You have to consider, why wouldn't this be one of the first things planned for when starting a city? You could probably make the argument that millions of- well, Because you don't always know how many people are going to end up living in a city. I mean, that's the obvious reason. And secondly, because America was a fucking wild west of capitalism where they did not give a shit what the average person was living in. They only cared about the richest people doing okay. It was a country at the beginning. America was a country completely and utterly controlled by rich land landowners. They were literally the only person who could vote. If you didn't own land, you fucking couldn't vote died from waste management from the 1600s to the modern day, from disease outbreaks to unclean water to even the famous Black Plague being caused by unsanitary habits. If this is the case, then why wouldn't the masterminds who constructed these cities, many in Europe being constructed entirely on star forts with sacred geometrical designs, ah, why yes. is it that they had no concept of waste management? Could it be that these cities were not designed by who we were taught and actually they were found after some type of reset? After being repopulated, these inhabitants had to rediscover how to grow food, reverse engineer leftover inventions, and they also needed to accommodate for their different ways of living. It could very well be that most of the inhabitants of these cities were orphans, and a ruling class raised them as the working class, taught them everything they needed to know, and didn't care one way or another if they were living in filth. Oh, but, but that's not capitalism though, okay? Um, the ruling class, that's, the ruling class was the giants not capitalism there's no problem with capitalism it's the ruling class was the giants i wouldn't be surprised if the elite class doled out technology to them to give the illusion of natural progress despite the obvious signs of advanced civilizations all around them i say that because there is a reason <laughs> that these cities are not designed with sewers it's because that's not the most efficient method and or it was never needed this brings to mind the fact that in the mainstream timeline, the ancient Romans and Greeks had better waste management than we did in the 1800s. And they also had way, way, way less population density. Greek and Roman cities had almost unfathomably less population density because they were still largely agrarian societies. There was... The people were spread across the countryside farming. They didn't all live in one place and work in one place and live and die their entire lives in basically one place. Very advanced actually, and the Romans were known to be very hygienic. Now, have you followed our other stuff when- Yeah, and the Romans also fucking used lead as a sweetener. Man, those Romans, seriously. We've brought up the Etruscans before and the early Greeks being involved with the Druids, well, Mainstream history tells us that the first sewers in Rome were built by these Etruscans. Now, we don't know if these first ones were used for waste. It could be that they were more for redirecting rainwater as it may wash away the topsoil. So that seems to be a good explanation of what the original builders would want in their cities. 
a method for redirecting water in an efficient manner for all sorts of means. If this is true, then the Romans had advanced aqueducts that we can't even replicate today. Yes, we literally can. <laughs> find me, please, for the love of God, find me a single Roman aqueduct that can't be recreated today. Of course they can fucking be recreated today. Are you fucking kidding me? That is just blatantly not true. Just actually full of shit. Maybe you personally can't recreate them, but yes, we absolutely fucking can replicate Roman aqueducts. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, everybody. If you are enjoying this so far, please make sure that you're subscribed. Press the subscribe button and ring the bell below because you're hearing the signal here with Demon Mama. And also, make sure that you press like. Likes ensure that these videos get as many views as possible, which means more friends for you all to hang out with in chat. And it means the world to me because it means I get to keep making a living doing fun stuff like this, like frying my brain with poop fuel. Anyway, press like, press subscribe. Let's continue the video. These would deliver fresh water around the city and there are even engravings showing this process. I remember seeing one picture that showed there was this device above this small little home showing that there may have been electricity involved in this process. What? Another thing to consider is Claudia what? Maxima. Huh? I'm sorry, can we go back to that? Home showing that there may have one picture that showed there was this. I couldn't find it. It was on FEB's stream. He knows this was made without mortar. Segovia. I'm not kidding you. It says I couldn't hold on. I have to move my frame for a second so you guys can see that I'm not lying right now. Oh, wait, that's not the right one. Where's my frame? Overlay. Here we go. Hide the overlay. I couldn't find it. It was on FEB's stream. He knows this was made without mortar. An ungodly citation. Do you see what I mean when I say there's not really anything to debunk? You just have to point out that they have literally no evidence what forever whatsoever besides I saw a picture on some guy's stream and that was enough for me to conclude that there must have been electricity in ancient Rome because you saw a contextless picture on some guy's stream. Jeez, it's, it's like, this is, at least spirit science claims that it was revealed to him by, uh, what's the guy, by Thoth device above this small little home showing that there may have been electricity involved in this process. Another thing to consider is Cloaca Maxima, which again, I do not think was originally intended for waste. I mean, look how massive this is. For water management, I can understand, but it seems that it wasn't until later times that the aqueducts were then connected to the Cloaca Maxima and it still became unusable because of the growing population. It is said, that the Cloaca Maxima is the first major sewer system, and it was built by the three Etruscan kings, which... Okay. I don't know, that sounds very interesting. It was so Why? Why does that sound very interesting? So big that it was large enough for wagons loaded with hay to pass, and that it could transport one million pounds of waste, water, and unwanted goods. It seems that it wasn't until later that they began creating latrines of all sorts and sizes. Now, a latrine is an outhouse but it can be anything that basically lets you poop into a hole. But what is it really? It's a waste collector. Does this really make- What? I'm s- What? Make sense? Okay, so these advanced Roman architects are going to build these fancy outhomes for pooping into these holes. It would be very difficult to clean and get out, and or you would have to constantly keep rebuilding new ones once they filled up. I just don't think this makes too much sense. But what if there's a component that we're missing? Think about it. These are called latrines, or it seems to be very close to lantern. Ah, no, dude, no. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, uh, the word latrine sounds kind of like lantern, I guess. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? This guy is off the rails. Something that you can ignite? 
These are very what? interesting, and they had them all. Are you for real? That these words kind of sound the same, so they must be. That must mean that actually they used poop fuel to fly spaceships. All over the ancient world, but what if they weren't just ancient outhouses? Now, I think there are multiple things going on here. These could have been made in a later time by new populations after the reset, and or this was a method that people who originally built these structures used in the process of getting rid of their waste. The reason I phrase it that way is because I do believe there are two things going on. The first being, and I'm not sure the best way to ask this, huh, but did ancient advanced civilizations really poop? I treat you all so well. I deliver you guys such amazing, uh, such amazing, no pun intended shit, okay? I deliver you all the best shit, I swear to fucking God. Let's just hear that again. Can we just hear that again? The first being, and I'm not sure the best way to ask this, huh? But did ancient advanced civilizations really poop? Now that sounds. Did did advanced civilizations really poop? I believe that the giants of yore didn't actually poop. They didn't have to poop out of their butts because their bodies were so advanced that they would they would process everything, thus removing the need to poop. It's crazy. And yes, there's more to explain as many of these old world buildings and mansions from around the world actually do not contain bathrooms. I do believe that this is a possible explanation and in our ancient- Have you- Maybe they don't have bathrooms because bathrooms weren't fucking invented yet. So they had wooden outhouses that rotted away way faster than their fucking ancient- than their fucking stone structures. Come on, man. Are you for real? Yeah, in the future. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? Let's continue. In past, we did not need to eat in the same way that we do now. The uh -huh. other explanation that many may find more plausible is that there was some type of ancient technology for efficiently converting food into dragon? electricity. Some type of ancient. Te the other explanation that many may find. There's a little tiny dragon in here. Did they poop on top of the dragon? It says hermaphroditism. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Why does it say hermaphroditism here? Find more plausible is that there was some type of ancient technology for efficiently converting poop into electricity. And then <laughs> what? Which one is it? Oh my god, dude. No, I don't think that sounds crazy, as this is what is happening today. From the BBC, dog poo powers Malvern Hills street lamps. Quote, Dog walkers on the Malvern Hills are being encouraged to drop the waste into an anaerobic digester which converts it into methane to fuel the lamp. From the Guardian, Thames water turns to poo power for renewable electricity generation. Quote, the company estimates that 16% of its electricity needs will be met in the current financial year by burning sewage flakes. From the Washington Post, quote, burning humanity's poop could yield up to 9.5 billion. I could keep going, there are many of these articles, but just type in poop fuel and you'll get your answer. Not only is it Guys, possible- here's a hot take. This is- th they did use poop for fuel in the past. Just not in the way that this guy thinks. It's not some miracle technology. Just turns out certain types of poop can burn. Yeah, actually in the past, uh, dried out animal poop, specifically like, um, like, uh, What's it called? Fucking like cows and shit like that. Their poop can be burned. So yeah, it was a thing that people could do. You could use it as a starter. You could literally throw like a, a piece of dried poop and set it on fire. Yeah, that's been done. It's just not magic. It's not some magical space technology. It's just something you do. And also it has limitations because it makes your house smell like shit. Well, we know that yes, poop can be turned into energy. Or continuing down that thought train, let's what, what What is this supposed to be? What the fuck is going on here? 
Let's explore some examples of architecture that you would think would be constructed with bathrooms or some type of plumbing system, yet they tell us that the first plumbing systems didn't really come into play until 1850. 1850? That seems pretty late to just be figuring out plumbing, yet you're building massive cities all around the United States? This wasn't new. These people knew uncleanliness led to disease. This has been happening for aeons. It's instinct at this point. If everyone was so sick and weak, then how the hell did they build these cities? The excuse is that it's only after these cities started thriving that disease came. Yeah, and yeah, because people because the disease the, the disease doesn't thrive when there's not a high concentration of people. Yes, the more people that go into a city, the more did the disease becomes a problem. Otherwise, more simple methods of getting rid of the waste are simple. He's literally he's answered his own problem before. Uh, like, he he said before, like, oh, the populations were different and then more people moved in, which created so much poop. Yeah, you answered your own question earlier on in the video. Europe, we see the same thing around the 1850s with this cholera epidemic. So no, there's no excuse. London and France had plenty of time in developing a plumbing system. In fact, London was a dystopian nightmare and still is, but London was a fucking dystopian nightmare. Nobody was, London had houses that were, people's houses caught on fire and collapsed on each other because there was a, a gajillion people stacked on top of each other. They had a plague every other week. London was a hellhole because it's been stacked on top of itself for a thousand years with, uh, with fucking mentally deficient kings ordering everyone around. This technology I was, don't understand. This is not a convincing argument at all. Apparently there in the early 1600s, and that's in mainstream history. The Palace of Versailles is said to have been built in 1623, first beginning from a hunting lodge. And okay. they have this whole story too, that Louis the 13th was into hunting and he was not fit to be a king or something about this place being in a wooded wetland, which is kind of interesting. But there were also many cases of smallpox at this time, which, yes, I believe has okay. to do with the filth and not some imaginary V word. This palace is incredible for this time period it is said to be built. Not only do the early engravings show that it was built on a star fort, but this looks like some type of self-contained city. Kind of like the asylums in America, but mixed huh? in with fancy mansions, possibly some type of government building from some prior what? age. I'll explain more on that shortly when we talk about the Gilded Age. But the weird thing about this place, well, I mean, there are a bunch of weird things, but there are no bathrooms. I mean, look at how- Citation needed. I don't believe that. I think he's just lying. I think he's lying. I bet that there's evidence of outhouses. I bet there's evidence of fucking chamber- of, of fucking shit- of latrines. I bet he's just lying. I don't think this is true. Hold on, Versailles? Hold on. In 1789, there existed nine flushing toilets at Versailles. In Versailles, okay, wait, actually, hold on. He might actually be slightly telling truth. So at the very beginning of the building of Versailles, it's true that there were no internal bathrooms uh, uh, at the time. Courtiers and royalty used de decorative commodes in each room. Commoners relieved themselves in hallways or stairwells. No one bothered to house train the royal dogs and servants. And I don't believe this. What the fuck is this shit? Hold on a minute. Where is this sort sort citation? Wait, nope. This is the tr hold on. Here we go. This is this is an official website. Hold on a second. I'm going to the official website for this one. I have to find this out. 
There's a million wor old WordPress blogs talking about this, but there's also historical images of toilets. So it seems like somebody's fucking lying. Multiple citations say that there were nine flushing toilets at Versailles in 1789. It does seem like there was issues with it there. Let's see. This is a history a history channel document, but it's a it's a blog by a contributor. Let's see. It said it was disgusting. There were there were mounds of human waste. Royal parties would result in uh, poorly discarded food, animal waste, and human waste. The amount of people who were going in was so dense that it made thorough cleaning of Versailles uh, nearly impossible. Cleanliness standards were subpar throughout re medieval Renaissance and Regency eras. Uh, but royal royal courts were actually typically dirtier than the average small cabin or home. It just seems like it was a really shitty place to be. Without a doubt, the most pressing health concern was caused by the, de the dearth of waste disposal issues in an era before reliable plumbing. Feces and urine were everywhere. Some courtiers didn't bother to look for a chamber pot, but just dropped their br britches and did their business in a staircase or a hallway or, the, or into the fireplace. Okay, so all I'm learning from this is that the French are disgusting. Kaz Rowe disbunks this. Ooh, 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 let's check out the debunk. Fuck that the French nobility pissed and shat in the hallways of Versailles. Versailles was finished in the mid 1600s and they did not have Yeah, see, this is the problem. One of the things that I was seeing is that all of the people talking about this, it would, they were just random WordPress blogs with no citations. The first thing that I saw that had any even drop of credibility was a History Channel contributor blog. So not exactly the highest standard here, but that's the best thing that I saw first. That bitch, okay? This is a massively pervasive myth, but where did it even come from? They had a piss wall, which is where all the men would go outside and piss on. Apparently, Turneau de la Morandière called Versailles the receptacle of all humanity's horrors. The passageways, corridors, and courtyards are filled with urine and fecal matter. Another quote from the same source claimed, the unpleasant odors in the park, gardens, and even the chateau make one's gorge rise. The communicating passages, courtyards, buildings, and the wings, corridors are all full of urine and feces. It wasn't until the 19th century that they were like, maybe we should get some bathrooms up in here. First of all, there's one vital missing detail. These primary sources never said it was human pee pee poo poo. A lot of the nobility had yappy little dogs and kind of didn't give a crap where the pets went to the bathroom. Here's another fact. Despite claims to the contrary, Versailles did actually have latrines. They just weren't exactly what we would think of as a bathroom oh. today. They were usually a room with a wooden seat that connected to a waste pipe to a cesspit. In certain eras, it was a chaise room that had curtains or screens for people to do their business behind using a chamber pot. Still incredibly stinky, yes, but not the same thing as people popping a squat on the palace floor like animals. Or they would just like go behind a door and piss on the floor. The aristocratic residents, of course, had their own clothes stools, which was kind of like a chair toilet, basically with a chamber pot in it, but everyone else had to use the latrine. This isn't helped by the fact that Versailles was apparently built on a smelly marsh, so in general, the entire place just kind of smelled bad by nature of being in a marsh. There were some rare recorded incidents of human people, usually men and usually the servants, relieving themselves on the walls of the palace, however, but 
these were always an unusual or offensive enough occurrence that people were very loudly complaining about it. There was at mm. least one incident where- It's weird that people would complain about it if it was just the normal thing. Convenient. See, I can do the conspiracy thing too. Convenient. If, if it was so normal to piss and shit everywhere, why did people complain about it in their journals? Hmm? Anyway, let's get back to it. I'm glad that we were able to find something to this. So it sounds like it's just a pervasive myth that people repeat forever. And anyway, I found, even on the Wikipedia page, it says that they had flush toilets by 1798. Let's continue. Huge displaces. Why is it that with all these massive mansions, essentially, based on the story that they give us, I mean, so... They built this place, and then Louis the Thirteenth dies, and they just left this place deserted for ten years. There was also some type of corruption going on, as it seems Louis the Thirteenth had bad monetary practices, whatever that means. There was even a supposed battle over this original chateau, some type of intense prince battle. I mean, they're telling you that different parties were fighting over the ownership. But yeah, this place had over 2,300 rooms, but not one bathroom. It's also weird how the people of France absolutely hated this place because think about what the mainline story is saying. These were rich aristocrats essentially just blowing their money without a care in the world while the rest of the population just got the scraps. Now, okay. I'm sure that did actually happen, but why is it that the story every time with these palaces and mansions is the same thing? Huh? Just seems strange. What do you mean the same thing? What are you talking about? The same thing. What's the same thing? What's the same thing? Wait, what's the same thing? What? I'm sorry, did I miss something? But why is it that the story every time with these palaces and mansions is the same thing? It just seems strange. Huh? I was looking at some of these rooms too, like the king's bedchamber and the queen's apartment and all, and I just don't believe people actually lived here. Just highly doubt it, and I mean, look at all this gold. That's one of the things about Versailles. It has an insane amount of gold, unlike any palace for this time. Okay. Where did they get it's all gold, this gold? It's gold paint. It's gold paint, my man. It's gold paint. I'm gonna keep going, but I thought this was interesting as well. Between 1925 and 1928, American philanthropist John D. Rockefeller gave 2.1 million, or 30 million today, to refurbish the palace. Wait, what? And nothing weird is supposed to be going on here? Again. What? What is that supposed to prove? Like, fuck John D. Rockefeller, but what are you talking about? What, what's, what's, what? He gave money to restore the palace? What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And same theme. Wealthy philanthropists getting involved. To drive my point home, basically, there are huh? a bunch of weird things about this palace and its history that does not line up not only did it not have bathrooms, which makes zero sense if this was where all the aristocrats were living with rooms completely gilded in gold, not only did they 100% have the money to afford building bathrooms, they had the technology. The first and most important part about this whole palace was the gardens. For some reason, this was so important to them. Not only did they need gilded mansions, they needed the most amazing- Maybe gardens are important because living inside when you don't have proper sewage is no fun. And so you go outside where it doesn't smell like shit and where if you piss or shit, it gets washed away by the rain. Maybe that's why gardens are important, huh? Have you considered that? That even fits in with your own fucking story. Fountains for its time. So amazing that new technology needed to be invented to facilitate this process. Forget about inventing a plumbing system or better waste management so that we can all start to get rid of disease that's been plaguing our civilization. No, no, let's not do that. Let's spend all this effort making massive artistic fountains. Okay, so we know they spent a bunch of money building this palace with all this golden uh -huh. stuff. Not only did Louis the- Yeah, wait, wait, hold on, dude. Royals building something self-serving and extravagant for themselves instead of div okay i don't get the point i don't understand i don't get it 14 somehow get all this money to expand his father's chateau but he also hired 
engineers Arnold DeVille and Renquin Solemn to just build this machine de Marley, which they say took $30 million to build and they did it in four years. This was a massive advanced hydraulic system designed to pump water from the Seine up a steep elevation to an aqueduct so that it could be used in the Palace of Versailles. They did this, just all of this, just for the fountains. But they didn't think to use the technology to get rid of the waste. When was this built? Sorry, hold on. Hold on, I gotta look this up. There's something to Marley. The machine de Marley was built in 1684 to pump water, hold on, for fountains. Most of the water pumped by the Marley machine ended up being used to develop a new garden. So it ended up just, it ended up just being used as an, as a, as a irrigation machine. It was supposed to bring water to the fountains, but it didn't actually work that way, so they just used it for irrigation. Also, it constantly broke down. I'm reading this I'm reading this directly from Wikipedia. This is just available on Wikipedia. I I don't understand where we're going with this. So it barely worked and it, it didn't work to the for the fountains anyway. So they just used it for irrigation. But they didn't think to use the technology to get rid of the waste. Before this machine Puerto Rican musician says uh, Karl Marx had an entire theory on the problems that capitalism causes with ecological issues, including human waste and feces called metabolic rift. This guy refuses to acknowledge how bad capitalism is, but instead wants to just continue talking about what dog whistling towards ancient aliens and giants. Yes, of course. It's always a distraction from the real problems. It's just a, a escaping to a weird fantasy world where you don't have to actually condemn the issues at hand and you can instead talk about how giants are are pulling your strings and making you poop in a, I don't know, making you poop in your pants. It was built, they were literally taking all the water supply from Paris just to supply these fountains. They realized they needed more, so they built this machine, pumped around 850,000 gallons of water, and ironically, it still wasn't enough as they needed four times the amount of water. This machine to Marley is pretty insane too. It had 14 gigantic wheels and 250 pumps to bring water uphill 600 feet. Yeah, and it didn't work. No. Wait, you just I cited the Wikipedia. Read the West rest of the Wikipedia, dude. It didn't work. It didn't work for the fountains. It barely pumped enough water and it didn't make the fountains work. So they just used it to pump irrigation for the gardens instead. Read the rest of the article, bro. I don't necessarily think that this machine is ancient tech. I think it was something designed to try to figure out how to work with the architecture and technology that was already there like the fountains, but over time, the machine just started to fail and there wasn't enough water, so I'm not sure if this was really the original source. But I bring it up because it shows that the technology was there at this time. So why? Why if they already had so much experience with civil engineering, they understood that sickness came from filth, the tech was there, they had the money to spend, then why were there so many issues with waste man- You're talking about fucking King Henry! You're talking about fucking King Henry. The dude was fucking nuts. Sorry, King Louis. Sorry, King Louis the 14th. You're talking about fucking King Louis. These guys are fucking crazy. That's why. Because they were fucking crazy people. All they cared about was eating fucking goose and jellied goose liver and fucking liver pies. I mean, eel pies. I meant to say, whatever. You understand. Fuck you. Management. Why were there no bathrooms in this marvelous place? <laughs> Because they're idiots! That's why! Because they're idiots! That's the easy answer. They're rich, stupid idiots. That's the reason why. It's not because of giants or aliens. It's because rich people are fucking stupid. You know what they tell us in mainstream history? They were just dirty. These aristocrats would relieve themselves in the hallways or- Okay, but that part we've, we, we, that part we've already debunked. That isn't actually true. Uh, this is- Oh wait, this is the- this is the History Channel. This is the History Channel article. This isn't actually true. 
And in fact, the evidence the the evidence that Kaz Rose cited was was examples of people being offended when people got like drunk and pissed in the hall. So actually, no, it wasn't that. Stairwells. I'm reading this article and it's saying that no one bothered to house train the royal dogs and servants wouldn't even consider cleaning it up. Remember when Kaz remember when Kaz Rowe pointed out that people conflate humans shitting on the floor versus the animals? Yeah, as it turns out, people didn't really think about animal about animal uh filth in the same way. They didn't even give a shit about like rat shit. Does that sound right to you? Because for one moment, let's just forget about whether this palace was capable of being built during this time period, which possibly, but not by these people. You're saying they spent all this money to build this palace and just gleefully shat all over the place? No. Come on. I'm it saying, obviously you're incorrect, dude. Yes, that's the easy answer is that you're just wrong, that you misread and didn't read your sources very well. We found that out in like less than 10 minutes of going, really, did they actually shit like that? No, actually, it turns out they didn't. It turns out they weren't very clean, but they didn't just shit in the hall. They were rich weirdos, they were really fucking dirty, but they didn't fucking shit in the halls. It gets even worse. So, I have to be real careful here. So I don't recommend looking this up, but I think it's crucial to understanding my point. There's this famous French artist from this very time period, and he wasn't just an artist, he was a nobleman, a revolutionary politician, but he's known because he drew these erotic, almost BDSM type engravings of these aristocrats basically experimenting with sex in the most foul, extreme way possible. I mean, I'm being moderate with my descriptions, I kid you not. I literally can't even show them in this video. Just type in Marquis de Sade or Marquise de Sade. I can't even believe that this exists and people think that these are the same people who built these structures but it's almost as if they're just discovering that they have buttholes. Not only that, there's- What? What? How do you- How is that your conclusion? How the fuck is that your conclusion? Are you fucking- Are you fucking serious? No, uh oh. I, I shouldn't even ask that question. Of course this guy's An serious. An engraving with these women having an orgy with a goat. It's extremely graphic, so please forgive me, I can't really show it, but yes, it is on Google Images. So anyways, yeah, these fountains were amazing. You know, it's also weird that they call <laughs> Louis- Oh yeah, they fucked a goat. By the way, the fountains were amazing. The 14th, the Sun King. But yeah, he needed to have these amazing fountains with all this deep symbolism ingrained. He was a man of science, yet they were cool with just going to the bathroom right in the halls. To move on, this is not the only instance of these palaces having no bathrooms. Buckingham Palace is said to have 78 bathrooms if you look this up, but they won't tell you that this wasn't originally the case. These were added later. I mean, there are 775 rooms. If you have that many people, you need more bathrooms. Not only that, but- This other example uh, does have bathrooms. Well, if you believe them, those are for staff and royalty, but visitors don't have access to a single toilet in the palace. You really have to think about this. These palaces are conceptualized by and for these wealthy aristocrats, and I mean, you're going to be having thousands of people in here supposedly eating very extravagant food every single day. They didn't not consider every day. where no, the food- No, they didn't do feasts every single day. No, they would not- These palaces were not full every single day of every single year. No, that's not how it works. Ended. This guy's just a baby. His brain Think is a baby. Think about how much waste that is. How disgusting these palaces were during this period. And that's not me saying that. That's mainstream history. No, it's they not. They say it's just because- No, it's not. It's weird huckster bunk idiots writing on fucking WordPress blogs. Because it was just a dark age. I mean- Many of these palaces were being created during the Renaissance period, the age of enlightenment, the age of invention, science, yet they couldn't figure out bathrooms and they were cool with it. People were getting sick and they weren't smart enough to figure out that maybe it had something to do with poop. I could keep going and showing you multiple examples of palaces like this, but to sum it up, if you look at these palaces from around the 16th to 18th centuries, they have this weird theme of being overly extravagant, spiritually and symbolically aligned, yet they don't have proper waste management 
in the elite that mainstream history tells us built these buildings were okay with just allowing their occupants to poop all over their beautiful creation. That they didn't do that. They didn't do that anywhere. Even the most it's stunning example that you have of Versailles where it did get particularly disgusting because it was built on a swamp. That's not even the truth. It's especially not true anywhere else. They had fucking outhouses. They had fucking uh, uh, chamber pots that would be taken out and emptied elsewhere. Like you're just, you're just wrong about everything. This is just stupid. So stupid. Or maybe there's something else going on. Oh yeah, and here comes the giants, everybody. Here we go, here comes the giants. To that. This brings us to the Gilded Age, because it's not just with these European palaces in from the 19th and early 20th century. We have another strange theme that pops up in America. You have all these rich mansions or palaces being built that look very similar to the palaces in Europe. They're all a part of this Gilded Age. Oh we- yeah, you guys. Okay, for those of you who haven't seen Mind Unveiled, he doesn't he actually doesn't understand um like the idea of uh of people building things to look like other things. Like um if if a building is built in America that looks like something from a previous era in the past, it actually in his mind has to be from that era secretly. Like people don't build buildings that are uh, styled to look like another famous historical structure. It actually has to be from the same era. It's the funniest thing in the world. It's a consistent thing across all of his videos. If a, if a building is designed, even if the architects say, we designed it to look like this because we felt we thought that Notre Dame was, we, we designed our building to look like Notre Dame because we thought Notre Dame was super, super beautiful. And then he'll be like, no, actually, secretly, it must have been built at the same time as Notre Dame. It's so fucking stupid. I don't under- I do not understand where in his brain he doesn't, like, understand the idea that, like, architects would pull from other stuff and deliberately design their buildings to look a certain way when they were going for a certain style. Yeah, of course, in the last video we watched of this guy, he did, yeah, he did, as Puerto Rican musician points out, he did point at a random rock wall in the woods and said that it didn't look like anything he'd ever seen before, so it must be thousands of years old and have been built by giants. Really, another piece of propaganda that was sold to us from historical writers like Mark Twain? One of the guys of fighting against corruption. Or was it just another Marxist attempt to persuade the populace into accepting their new overlords? <laughs> another- I'm sorry, what did he just say?! Like, Mark Twain? One of the guys of fighting against corruption. Or was it just another Marxist attempt to persuade the populace into accepting what? their new overlords? What?! What are you talking about?! Where did that even come from?! <laughs> I'm sorry, how did we get there? Apparently, designing buildings that looked like buildings from another era is a Marxist attempt to convince people to accept their new overlords. We don't even know who their new overlords are supposed to be yet. He hasn't actually said what the new overlords are or why designing buildings that look like old buildings would do that. Just fucking what? Real quick to explain that, Mark Twain was a fake. First off, his real name was Samuel Longhorn Clemens and he was a slaveholder. So he grew his way to riches, probably because of his family, right? He was literally a symbol of the American dream. Oh my God. Does he think that Marxist means that it was written by somebody named Mark? Is that why he said Marxist? Why is he- why did he say Marxist here if he's going off about Mark Twain? Then out of nowhere, towards the end of his life, he becomes this huge critic of these capitalists, as if he wasn't one of them. Anyways, yes, basically, these wealthy capitalists, the robber barons, and I know they say that because they're stealing wealth, but I don't think that's the only thing they stole. So yeah, we're talking Rockefellers, Carnegie, JP- Does he think- does he think Marx Twain is he think is he getting Mark Twain and Karl Marx mixed up? Is that what's happening here? Oh 
Morgan, Henry Ford, Vanderbilt, and many other families that most of them were not even American. They were plants and connected with secret societies in Europe. Not only that, but they were connected to famous writers as well, such as H.G. Wells and the Fabian Society. They created our entire worldview. They wanted us to see them as wealthy capitalists because that was really a lie. That was crony capitalism. They were plants. They were- Oh my god. Remember how I said- Do you guys remember how I said that this guy can simply not acknowledge that capitalism is the problem with, with almost everything that he brought up? That like, oh yeah, why didn't cities prioritize building new sewage systems? Well, because the rich people didn't have to deal with it and poor people didn't have a choice but to deal with it. And he's like, no, 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 that's not a problem with capitalism. That's not a problem with inequality. That's just crony capitalism, which is created by the giants. I mean, yeah hijackers and how if you look into this whole gilded age and robert baron fiasco you see that they all started spending a bunch of money on these enormous mansions some of which have never really Be yeah because they're rich fucks because they're un they're they're fucking literally had no they were fucking monopolists and had tons of money and they built themselves palaces wow same thing as fucking nobles did in the past dude what are you talking about man what are you fucking talking about they've been replicated today these buildings contain these amazing expensive artworks and i know these people were rich but where did they get all this money from what do you mean There's where did they get some money from Maybe it was from the fact that they literally owned entire industries under Monopoly because there was literally no regulation whatsoever. There was no challenging them whatsoever. They inherited wealth. Many of them inherited wealth directly from nobility at the, ch at, at the changing of monarchy into democratic systems and republics and democratic systems. And then they just began to re rebuild the exact same system. What are you fucking talking about, my man? Where the fuck is this guy's brain? Support that many of these old And what does this have to do with the poop? Things ...had some type of special tech that was lost. The fireplaces in these buildings do not seem to be for burning wood, being as extravagant as they are. There are always these strange devices that are seen in these older fireplaces from this Gilded Age time period. Were these some type of heating system that came with the original building and so, after being repurposed, they began burning wood and just- Oh yeah, this guy doesn't believe that any mansions were actually- He doesn't believe that any buildings are original. Even though you can actually find photos of these buildings being built as originals, he believes every building is actually a repurposing of a giant structure from the past. There's no such thing in his mind, except for when there is. But when there- But, but most of the time, he just off the cuff will insist that every building is actually a repurposed version of a giant building ruining these places now it's not to say that some of these buildings may have been truly built at this time even though these building techniques are ancient in some cases it is fully possible with the right resources to construct some of these buildings dude most of these buildings have formal records of when they were built they were just built in the style of older buildings oh my god he's so stupid so fucking stupid. But in the large Do you remember? It's funny that he says this immediately after I just said he doesn't really believe that new buildings are built. He believes that they're all repurposed. And then he goes, well, yeah, actually, some of them might have been if you, if you had the right resources, but most of them are just repurposed from giants. In the majority of the cases, many aspects of the story do not line up. And these buildings may not be ancient, but it's possible that they were not built in the fashion that we have been told. I think it's odd that so many of these photos had vanilla skies and that compositing and photo manipulation was actually a crucial part of the process. It was just called photo retouching back then. But you don't think they can do this with architecture? Absolutely. And if we consider what we know about the history of waste management in these robber barons, it's very possible that there was some sort of hijacking that took place. In the official narrative, it even tells us that these European palaces had multiple battles taking place over the ownership of the buildings. Wh oh, what? How do we know that the winners didn't okay. just make up some history? Well, one good example, and there are several that would each make their own good- How do we know that? Well, that's a good question, because historians do a lot of work to figure that out, actually, as it turns out. 
Historians do a fuckload of work to try and verify the actual histories of things. There's a whole process for that, my man. ...videos, but many of these buildings were- Rhodes says, Demon Mama, just as admit you're a Marxist twainist already. We know you're bought out by Big Butthole. <laughs> it's fucking true. ...demolished. And there were several of these on the famous <sighs> Fifth Avenue, the mess. Vanderbilt Mansions. I bring this up because mess. not only is this very European looking, but the amount of art and wealth put into this place is insane. Okay. It was a massive French Renaissance palace called Petit Chateau. Hmm. Interesting. The Vanderbilt What's type... interesting about that? What was it? What do you mean mm, interesting? What do you mean? What do you mean mm, interesting? What do you fucking mean mm, interesting? Hundreds of properties. I really don't buy the official narrative at all. When you look at Fifth Avenue, right? This is also where St. Patrick's Cathedral is. If you're one of those, but they're construction photos, people. Yeah, I know. There isn't that much, though. The spot. <laughs> uh, oh, but we have photos of it being built. No! It was the giant, you cuck! If you're one of those, ooh, historical record, but we have photos of it being built, and we have the records of all of the people who worked on it, and the people who lived and died building a historical monument. Duh! Duh, you're so stupid. It was giants! It was giants! Both told me so. Fires weren't added until 1930. And whenever you see these posed construction photos, you know something's up. Who knows? But it's very odd, and I'm sure they could add on and build on top of these structures, but it's always the same thing of showing it once it's already been constructed. Why aren't these photos- It's not constructed! It's not even close to being done! What are you talking about? You're showing a picture and lying to everyone's face! Better preserved if these people were so wealthy. I'm talking insane wealthy. The Vanderbilts were far richer than anyone today. William received almost a hundred million, or I think three billion dollars, but the difference is no one back then had anything near this amount of wealth, except royalty in other countries. Which again is why the I wonder if there's something on this wiki I wonder if there's something on this Wikipedia page that would describe, that would explain how these guys got so wealthy. Could it possibly be right down here talking about his railroad empire? Could it perhaps be number six titled Railroad Empire that maybe explains how he got so wealthy? History regarding these families are so sus- No, it had to be giants, my- it had to be giants, guys. The giants who didn't poop. Fact. There's actually a lot to this Vanderbilt story that may be outside the scope of this one video, but this is a good foreshadowing to our next video that I promise you, I think you guys will really enjoy. We're going to go visit the biggest one, that's all I'll say. But back to what I was saying about the different possibilities as to what's going on here with waste management, I do believe it's a little bit of both scenarios. There must have been a time in our development where we do not need to poop. Now, of course, this is coming from a spiritual, cosmological view not the modern view of evolution that says our consciousness formed after matter. No, this idea that we came from spirit and slowly became material or devolved over time. We first became harmonious with nature. Spirit astral body over ancient city. <laughs> Why did he leave that in? The first stage, or the Fey people, the androgynous- Ancient fairies playing in the forest in the style of an old painting! <laughs> God. Beings, the blue beings that were harmony with ancient fairies that are the color blue playing in the forest in the style of an old painting. <laughs> Dude's even. Dude can't even come up with. He doesn't even know what what type of painting he wants. Uh, just old. Give me an old painting, bro. Yeah, old one. Forest. Of course, I'm talking before Atlantis and very early astral human stages of development. But over time, after the deluge, it would make sense that things uh, were more material, and so humans began to eat and poop. Why? At first, being that after the deluge, the main people building these architectures were the druids. Druid priests performing magical ceremony in the style of an old painting. Bro, this one looks like shit. This one looks like fucking shit. Arians, or the teachers after Atlantis, which yes, included all varieties of people. 
They began building these architectures, but they possess some technology for converting their poop into an energy source, keeping their cities clean, and this would also give them a good renewable resource. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on. I don't mean to be a debunker here. Okay? Hold on a second, everybody. Remember how almost this entire video was him claiming that there's no evidence that they had bathrooms in any of these towers? Or any in any of these palaces or cities? The, like, uh, the bulk of this video was him claiming there's no evidence that they had bathrooms in any of these fancy rich places. But then he just goes on to claim they must have had poop technology. Of which, THERE IS NO EVIDENCE! So why should we believe, why should we believe that there isn't, that there's not enough evidence for, that they got rid of their own waste, but we should believe that there's evidence of magical fucking poop energy? Why? Why would we ever believe that there's, ma that, that there's magical poop energy if you also want us to not believe there's not enough evidence of their toilets, when of course we obviously know that there were different ways that they managed with they managed their waste that we were able to look up in less than 10, 10 seconds. It took us fucking less than 10 minutes to look up information about that. There's no other explanation, guys. Trust me, you should you should believe without any evidence. Uh, my claims that they didn't have toilets and therefore it must mean that they had alien poop magic and and or didn't have to poop This is the intelligence I would expect from the minds behind these palaces All it would take is these latrines or latterns that can collect a vast amount of fecal matter and then convert the methane or gas into a fuel source Don't think it's that advanced of a tech and this would be another fuel source that then they would do it bro Then do it then make a latern to have access to. Maybe this is what they did for a while, possibly then learning about aether technology and atmospheric electricity, which then could have been another factor involving the cataclysms occurring during this time. After the cataclysm- Yeah, you know guys, at first they discovered the poop energy and then they entered into the aether realm. Then they had aether energy after that. It was first, first they used poo, poo power and then they transitioned over to the aether uh, ectoplasmo energy. It's really simple. F fucking 30 minutes going, hmm, I don't know about these toilets, guys. And then in the last 10 minutes, yeah, they used poop energy to tell, to, to be able to power their advanced civilization while they switched over to the uh, Aethero ectoplasmic network, uh, which you can see by these buildings up here. There you go, guys. Bye. People began moving into these cities, as in with Europe. They started to reverse engineer these leftover cities, but the only difference is that because of these cataclysms, these survivors that found these cities were of a different culture and had resulted in eating flesh and were cannibals. This is the true history of meat eating. It began with cannibalism, not the need for hunting. If you were that primitive that you have to survive off the hunt, then what happens when there's nothing to hunt? Most tribes resorted to cannibalism. So, what? this concept of eating flesh got introduced into these cities. You had these people literally farming thousands of animals. They moved in a populace of people or orphans into these cities, and the aristocrats would just sit on top while they shat in these hijacked palaces from a recent civilization. They then tainted not only the entire city with fecal matter, but then they destroyed the water source. It really makes no sense if you think about it. It's literally impossible to create a functioning society in the way that they tell us without proper hygiene. Yet, they were just living this way for the last 2000 years, but the Romans had it figured out. That makes sense. Not only that, but toxic poop became problematic in other ways. They began taking this toxic poop that not only was causing cholera everywhere, but they would take this sewage sludge from the cities and create these sewage farms for using these poops to fertilize the population's food supply. You don't think that has an energetic effect on the foods that we eat? An energetic effect? Why does it need to have an, why'd you have to jump to an energetic effect? What are you fucking talking about, my man? What are you fucking talking about? If you bring in all that we said about the United States, none of these cities were designed with plumbing or waste management in mind. They had to reinvent it after the 1850s, which just shows that they had no clue what they were doing. 
I don't see the sudden rise in city population being an appropriate argument as the level of architecture, science, and tech being developed at this time does not align with their inability to properly design and set up these cities. It actually makes more- Fucking square that with me, man. They were too stupid. They were apparently too stupid, but also too smart. This guy literally contradicts himself in his own in his own words. It couldn't have been the population problem. It had to be that they were too stupid to use the techno the poop magic technology from before. But they were also extremely advanced and inventing all kinds of things. So it had to just be that they were will willfully not using the poop magic from before. Apparently, this makes no sense, my dude. Your theory is fucking bonkers. This is the shittest theory I've ever heard in my entire life. More sense that these cities were founded upon older foundations and slowly, piece by piece, they made modifications. Have you seen Tartaria explained on underground cities? Almost every American city has an entire underground component or old city beneath the mall. Yeah, I love this one. This AI generated image that just repeats the, the fucking St. Basil's uh, cathedral but it just it continues in underground and that's supposed to be evidence you're supposed to just look at like an artist continuing an underground version of saint basil's and you're supposed to be convinced like that like no actually this part that's 20 feet tall it's actually 40 feet tall why would it be 40 feet tall well because it is because i needed to come up with something that says that it's actually taller even though the architecture looks just fine the way it is and it makes sense just the way it is no i need it to be bigger I need there to be more underground because then it will match with my giant theory and I need there to be giants, guys. I need the world to have giants in it because that allows me to continue living in a fantasy instead of dealing with reality. Modern one. Just like Futurama, the next civilization builds on top of the old. I think it's not too crazy to think that there- Argumentum ad Futuramum? Incredible. I love citing Futurama when I'm trying to, uh, when I'm trying to present a historical argument for why the giants actually built St. Basil's Cathedral. There would be some sort of cultural amnesia that goes over along with something like a cataclysm, especially if there are more children than adults left over. So you tell me, what do you think? Was there a time where humans didn't have to poop? No. Why do these palaces not have bathrooms? They did. And why were these aristocrats pooping in the hallways? They weren't. Was there possibly a way that they could use poop as a fuel source? Yes, but not in the way that you think. Hope you guys are having a good week. And if you guys could come hang out with us in the Discord, it would be super cool. Do not go to that Discord ever. Going to that Discord would be like inviting would be like inviting a poop into your ear. That that Discord is a place to catch disease, brain diseases. That would be like willfully consuming mad cow disease. Sometimes do movie nights, and it's honestly a great resource for collecting ideas and just staying connected. It's okay if you don't know anything about Discord. Just download it, send me a message, and I will literally explain everything. But yeah, you can do everything from your phone or browser. Just come into the server, ask us questions directly. It's the easiest. I love that they've got a general dream sharing. Oh my God. I bet the dream sharing channel is the most deranged place. I saw my grandmother and she was dipping her pubic hairs into the paint and then painting with the pubic hairs. And then she walked over and she wiped my face with her painted pubic hairs. Wow, interesting dream, bro way to get in contact with us and to assist in growing the community sending you guys a bunch of love and all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled oh what all of you people posting question marks you've never heard jordan jordan peterson talk about his grandma dream just look it up on youtube look up jordan peterson grandma dream it's one of the it's that that i was almost a word for word quote of what he says just go look it up you'll you'll you won't regret it You definitely won't regret it. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is? 
<laughs> no, you don't, dude. You definitely do not. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit, my man. Guys, my brain hurts so badly. That, my lovely, lovely imps, is mind unveiled. This is why we do Conspiracy Mama, because it's good to remind yourself of just how wacky it gets out there, okay? That there are people who roam this earth who cannot imagine that somebody would ever design a building that looks like another building specifically design a building that looks like another historically relevant building. And instead, they must secretly have actually both been built by giants in an ancient era where they used, uh, where they simultaneously didn't poop, but also pooped and use it to, to fuel their advanced technologies so that they could build the Aethernet, um, which is not some something from Final Fantasy, but is actually uh, definitely a real thing that the giants would use to control the minds of the people uh and john d rockefeller uh v versailles uh bilderbergers uh, uh uh the the freemasons uh, uh uh illuminati um sorry uh anyway if you enjoyed that please press like and subscribe below and tell me if you have uh if you have conspiracy videos you want me to react to, please leave them in the comments below or come on to my Discord where we don't have a dream share, admittedly, um, but it's a lot more fun and there's a lot less uh, poop-related conversation. Uh, you can come join the Discord and you can leave uh, recommendations there on the Discord. We would love to have you. Discord.gg forward slash Demon Mama. My lovely, lovely imps, it has been an absolute pleasure.